Well, we might think of the sun as a solid object or a disk, but it's spinning. Uh, about every month, uh, the north and southern parts of the sun, what humans call the north and south parts of the sun, spin a little faster than the middle. And this uh, friction and this interaction with all the gases that make up the outer layers of the sun create these crazy strong magnetic fields. And from time to time, these charged particles get tossed into space. And so we have uh, both these solar flares where these zaps of uh, electromagnetic energy, uh, photons uh, uh, that you can see and uh, in the X-ray region, very high frequency, and these charged particles, both come shooting out uh, away from the surface of the sun. And if the orbit of the Earth is in the place where those things are shooting, we get zapped, if I may. And of course, who could forget the Carrington event in 1859 where this, this sort of thing went on for a week and it just ruined a lot of telegraph systems, which was the state of the art at that time. And so the deal is, everybody, the key thing that we have going on here on Earth, which is really good for us living things, is this magnetic field. Inside the Earth is this churning molten iron and nickel and it creates this magnetic field that enables your compass to work, what have you. And so this is what causes the charged particles to come down at the North and South Pole, down toward the, the middle of the Earth. And it's the speed of those particles passing through the atmosphere that creates the aurorae, the aurora borealis and aurora australis. And so it's fantastic. And you guys have been talking about it. And I'm out west here. And when it gets dark, I'm going to be looking. I'm going to be watching where you have clear skies tonight. But the other thing, everybody, that is a real danger to our technological society, is different from 1859, is how much we depend on electricity and our electronics and so on. And, you know, it was a pretty straightforward bunch of things that went wrong in Texas back in uh, February of 2021, where the power went out and it affected an enormous number of people. Well, we probably have systems in place to manage this interaction of these charged particles with Earth's magnetic field. But stuff might go wrong the way it did uh, back in 2003 in South Africa, for example. And this is another thing where we need to evaluate our electrical grid and prepare for this sort of deal because the sun doesn't take a meeting about when it's going to produce one of these things. Bill, Abby. <laughs> The answer, the answer is absolutely without question, it depends. <laughs> it depends on the strength of the event and it depends how much infrastructure, how much of our infrastructure we have prepared this sort of thing. You've probably heard somebody remind every, each other that the safest place to be in a lightning storm is in a car because the metal of the car makes the energy from the lightning go around the passengers inside. And then it's on rubber tires is a not irrelevant effect. But we don't have infrastructure on all of our transformers. This is, I say this because on a, a competitive network, <clears throat> I did a TV show, <laughs> The End is Nigh, uh, where we did six world ending scenarios. Well, the one that really worries me is this very one. This one, show episode number three where we get these coronal mass ejections, CMEs, uh, back to back. So if you had really big ones, like he was talking about a, a third story G5, wow, zzz, except in space there's no sound, it would just be... And uh, uh, these things, if they happen 12 hours apart, hypothetically, uh, you could turn off the electricity in the whole world, which would be cat catastrophic, you know, it's... We could, none of us really in the developed world could go very long without electricity. Oh, you can, there's survivalists and so on, but just objectively, 
if nothing else, the refrigeration goes bad and we spoil enormous amounts of food. But all this is, this is all solvable, you guys. This is all something we understand. But it's the Earth's magnetic field interacting with the charged particles. Whew. 